Hey, Captain Gender here. Last video I talked about representation and its importance. However, I must clarify that including a random, diverse character doesn't always result in positive outcome. This is because there is good and bad representation. The big two have great examples of the former, but regretfully, they also have a lot of the latter. Today, I will explain four things that result in a bad representation and will give possible solutions to the issue. So, let's talk gender and comics. Sometimes, diverse characters are based solely on stereotypes, without any real intention to put research into their identity or depict them in an accurate fashion. From a social point of view, this is really bad because it enforces a single narrative on how people of a demographic are, while, in reality, people are diverse and have different experiences, even if they are part of the same group. Chimamanda and Gosia Adichie talks about this in her TED talk, The Danger of a Single Story. I will link the video for you all to see. Overall, what she talks about is how people buy into a single narrative for specific groups, because that is the image that is constantly repeated in media and the only narrative many of us have access to. So there's only one representation for them. Big deal. They should be happy they're in media at all. Actually, most of these stereotypes lack any argument and are often damaging for a group. For example, a lot of people are not willing to date bisexual folks because they are often portrayed in media as unfaithful couples, which is not true. Likewise, some decades ago, comics depicted certain non-white people in very harmful ways, many times mocking them and implying they were inferior, which is a complete lie. All people are equally valuable, and white cis-head male superheroes shouldn't be the standard. Furthermore, all of these false stereotypes can lead to characters who feel repetitive and unrelatable. And for a man like me, why is it important that those characters feel relatable? In fact, characters who are not based in stereotypes tend to be more interesting, both for the groups being represented and for the general population. Which brings me to the second problem. If a certain group is represented in a negative way, the members of that group won't feel a bond with these characters. Likewise, stereotypical characters are often shallower and more predictable. Complex characters are more likely to be popular, both within that group and outside of it. Think about popular white cis-head heroes. Each one has specific experiences that make them appealing, interesting characters. And you might feel a strong bond with a specific character because of those unique traits. Characters of diverse groups should also be portrayed in that realistic way. Additionally, having characters who embody the different experiences within a certain group can help appeal to the different members of the audience. For instance, both America Chavez and René Montoya are Latin American lesbian women, but their stories and powers are really different, attracting different audiences. For example, a younger person might feel more related to Miss America because of her age and because it's easier to relate to her college experience than to Renée's work life. This all feels like you want to force inclusion and movies that do that often end up being bad. For me, force inclusion is a very interesting topic, so I dedicated a whole point to it. I think this one may be in the mind of a lot of people, especially because of a certain Marvel movie. It is a somewhat controversial topic. On one hand, I really do think that there is no such thing as a non-necessary diverse character. Women, LGBTQIA plus people, people of color, 
and disabled people all exist, and including them in media is not forcing an agenda on people. However, sometimes people read characters as unnecessary because the company is so eager to seem diverse that it ends up placing all the focus of that character on its belonging to a specific group. I cannot help to compare Anna Bodens and Ryan Flex, Captain Marvel to Patty Jenkins' Wonder Woman. These movies were the first female-led films for each of the big two, but while one of them was great, the other was hated. This is because Wonder Woman is a great superhero film, whose main character just happens to be a woman. There are so many things that make Diana great, lovable person, and being female is just one of the pieces of her complex character. Meanwhile, Marvel was just so proud of having launched a film led by a female superhero that it forgot to give said character interesting features beside her gender and being OP. And couldn't they just hint at inclusion so conservative men like me don't have to deal with this? Actually, that is something that does happen, and it is also problematic. For this one, I'll be specifically talking about queerbaiting. In case you're unfamiliar with the term, Wikipedia states queerbaiting is a marketing technique for fiction and entertainment, in which creators hint at, but then do not actually depict, same-sex romance or other LGBTQ representation. This may bring to mind the many announcements Marvel has made over the years about including an LGBTQIA plus character to the MCU without really doing anything. Even if some think this is representation, it really isn't. Queer betting is actually a very comfortable position, in which a company doesn't really take a position because it doesn't alienate conservative audiences and it attracts the LGBTQIA plus community and its allies. These companies are profiting from people starving for representation, who would rather see it hinted than have nothing. This is not how it works. As I talked in my previous video, representation can have a lot of benefits, but those only take place if there is actual representation, and not just hints at it. Whoa, you're just here complaining without giving any solutions. That's what I'm getting to. Fortunately, the solution to this problem is pretty straightforward. Creators need to do their research. They should put a lot of thought into making each character and shouldn't think the creation of a diverse character is a process completely alien and different than creating another cishet wild male superhero. Of course, the experience of a trans man is different than that of a cis man, but there is some overlap into what they live. Creators should be aware of this and be willing to complete their knowledge gap from sources other than stereotypes. This will also help them create more complex, compelling characters with interesting relatable flaws, instead of damaging stereotypes. So you're saying writers should never write characters of demographics different from them? Not at all. You don't necessarily need to be a part of a group to write about it, as long as you do enough research. For instance, Brian Michael Bendis is a white man, yet he does a great job at writing Miles Morales because he takes inspiration from his black daughters. He's invested in making Miles a three-dimensional character, and that has gained this Spider-Man a place in the heart of many. Considering that the comic book industry has been writing really complex narratives about fictional aliens born light years away from Earth, it shouldn't be that hard to write about people who are actually inhabiting our planet. I'll be back to debate you some other day. You heard him. If you like this video and want to see more content like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button. My work here is done. Gap gender out.